Good morning. I am Sanjay Garia. And what if I told you I could make diamonds out of your regular pencil lead, or I could make a material that weighs as much as a cat's whisker but could take the weight of a cat? You'd call me a magician. Well, I'd be no magician really. I'd just be a nanotech scientist. So, interested in knowing how I could turn all your pencil leads into diamonds and make you a millionaire? Here is how. To give you a basis on what I'm about to talk now. We know that small materials come up to make up a larger material, like threads come up to make up a cloth. Similarly, small, small spherical particles, known as atoms, come up to make up a material or an object. So, what is nanotechnology? Nanotechnology is basically the manipulation of the position of these atoms. For example, if I have a thread in which atoms are lined end on, I could turn it into a circular pattern, which makes a hollow tube instead of a thread. However, the forces that govern our reality are very different from the nanotech. For example, if I drop a ball, we know it's going to fall down because of gravity. But if I drop a nanoparticle, it doesn't have to fall down because gravity doesn't have the same effect in the nanotech as it does in our reality. Hence, it's said that the reality of nanotech is very different than ours. How small is nano? We know that the standard measurement of length is a meter, so a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. To give you a brief comparison, the tip of a pen is about a million nanometers wide. The thickness of a sheet of paper is about 100,000 nanometers wide. The 50 micron plastic bag, which is 50,000 nanometers wide, is the smallest visible thickness to the human eye. The coronavirus is 140 nanometers wide, while the DNA that makes us up is only 2.5 nanometers wide. So why change the position? simply because changing the position allows us to change their properties. For example, if I have a bad conductor of heat, I could change a few positions and make it a better thermal conductor. Or if I have a decent conductor of electricity, I could make a superconductor by changing a few positions. We know that right now we're having a lot of problems because we're running out of energy, because we're using non-renewable resources such as natural gas, crude oil, and coal, which we know is going to run out in the potential future. Imagine what we could do with nanotech. We could revolutionize these resources and make them much better so that we never have to use them again. One example is solar panels. Right now, there are limited use because of their efficiency. Affiliated with nanotechnology, we could create something that we would never require non-renewable resources again, all promoting a greener living. There are multiple other uses of nanotech as well. Fullerenes, which are kind of look like a soccer ball and are hollow from within made of nanoparticles, carbon nanoparticles, can be used to transport medicine inside a body or could be used to make nanobots that could kill only cancer cells. Even the computing industry heavily uses nanotechnology. For example, the quantum computer can solve problems that we have been thinking over for years now, which our normal computers can't even try to solve. So why doesn't everybody become a magician and use nanotechnology, simply because it's very expensive to conduct experiments at the scale. And there's a little bit of uncertainty related to this. So with everything I've told you right now, you know that nanotechnology is the future and we should all invest in it. Because nanotechnology, once revolutionized, would help us live all the luxuries of life without having to destroy the environment and promoting a greener living. This is Nanotechnology Explained. Thank you.